Okay, so it's Blue Sea and Lenny once again. We're going to talk about um, the perfective aspect. And before we do that, we're going to talk about the forms of the perfect and the pluperfect active indicative in Greek. Um, what Belisi has written up uh, in is, is the forms of the, um, what I'm calling the regular perfect, the living, breathing, functioning way of forming a perfect of a verb that begins with a, whose stem begins with a consonant like luo and paideo and kaluo and ends with a vowel like all of those. Like luo ends with a u, paideo with an eu, and uh, kaleo also with an eu, one of the verbs that we had like this. Mm. Uh, I think that's probably it so far. But anyhow, um, and then the way you form these verbs, as we talked about in class today, is you have a menu of choices, and different Greek verbs do different things. But the but the living, breathing perfect is the one that these exemplify, in which you do reduplication. In other words, if you have a stem luo of lu, you take the initial consonant and you put an e after it, so that gives you lelu, um, and we talked about that as a kind of regularization of the of the sound phenomenon of stuttering, that's really what it is. Um, lelu, and then you have an ending that begins with a kappa suffix, okay? Um, this, this is a suffix that actually functions in the, other, in the older forms of the verb too, we'll see it later on, um, or you'll, you'll see it later on because we're not going to get there this semester. Um, and, um, but the, that's, uh, that becomes the, the, the perfect um, suffix for many Greek verbs. And then you have, so you have ka, kas, ke, kamen, kate, kase as the personal endings of the singular and plural, the first, second, and third persons. Um, it's a straightforward form and a very distinctive one, right? It's easy to recognize. It doesn't look like the aorist. It doesn't look like the forms of the imperfective aspect that are present in the imperfect, right? Um, and and if, if we look next at the forms of the pluperfect, we can switch to that. We we get the oops. There we go. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what you do uh, is you augment the reduplicated form, right? This is a very distinctive uh, form to, to look at. And then th what is an alpha in the singular becomes an eta in the in the singular of the perfect becomes an eta, and this the past tense form. Um, so you got from lelu ka you get e lelu ke, from lelu kas you get e lelu kes, and from lelu ke you get e lelu ke with an ei. Again, all the vowels that were short in the perfect, the present perfect, okay, which is really what that is, that right now I have finished releasing is what it means, okay, um, become long vowels in the endings of the pluperfect. And in the plural, we get a, 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 the, an e, e, e uh, linking vowel. So it's e, lelu, kemen, e, lelu, keta, e, lelu, kasan. Again, I think once you see a perfect of this type, you can recognize what it is, and the pluperfect even more clearly because of the, the mm -hmm. augment in front of it, and then the endings, I think, are pretty transparent and analogous to the other endings we Lucy, Lucy and I talked about how most people don't even remember the endings of the pluperfect because you so you can identify them as soon as you see them. So uh, the the next concept is what's on the third blackboard, which is how how what these things mean and how we understand the the um, how we understand the aspectual difference and in concrete terms how we translate. Now the complete system of the indicative of the Greek verb. You got the whole thing here, okay? The, at least in the active voice, you got the two forms of the imperfective aspect, that is the so-called present and imperfect tenses, and the aorist form, which is only a past tense. And now we've got the two forms of the most current form, anyway, of the perfective aspect, the present perfect or the perfect as it's called, and the pluperfect, the past perfect. So you see, I think that it's best to think of them as a triangle, analogous to the to the triangle about the lion, right? The lion at the top that's that's opposite to a lamb and that has no that has both genders, if you wish. That's neither masculine nor feminine. 
that's like the heiress. But the imperfective and the perfective contrast like a male lion and a female lioness, right? They're, they're a contrast with one another in every aspect of their, sorry, I shouldn't have used that <laughs> word, in every way of their, of their form and in their meaning, okay? So uh, here are the translations that we're recommending for the aorist, uh, indicative of a Greek verb, the simple past I sent. For the imperfect aspect forms, the present is I am sending, expressing an action that's not complete. In that sense, it's imperfective. And the imperfect is just the past tense I was sending. When it comes to the perfective aspect forms of the indicative, the two forms we've done here, are the present perfect, I now, at the moment, have sent something. And the first past form, I had sent earlier something. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have a chunk of a system as a whole presented to us. And it's good to think of it that way as a global thing that works uh, in contrastive ways and that we, whose meanings we understand and continue with when we see it. So we've got to learn those forms, understand how they're put together, and be able to recognize them when we see them. We also talked about the fact that we have some, some verbs uh, have perfects that are different from this. And we talked in class about the, a verb of the type pempo. You might want to write this one down. We see that with pempo you have a stem P-E-M-P, -E okay? In the present, when you make a perfect of it, you do two things. You add the reduplication, so you get pe, 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 and you change the E vowel to an O, and you finally aspirate the final P into a phi. So you get pe, pom, fa. Okay? I think those are, don't forget the accent. <laughs> those things are, are not predictable anymore. You have to learn them when you see them, and we'll point out when it comes to the vocabulary when we have funny kinds of perfects. But we talked about how there's a menu of different things, aspiration of the consonant, changing of the stem vowel, reduplication when the verb stem begins with a consonant. We'll learn what happens, what you do when you um, begin a verb with a vowel. We haven't done that yet for any of the forms of the perfect, but we're, we're, we're on our way to understanding the way the Greek indicative as a whole functions. Okay?